back to POV Italian Cooking in association with Simply Good Food TV, where today we're going to take a look at a found episode that I recorded about a year ago, kind of in that old style, where I'm going to be making a sous vide Italian style swordfish. Now before we get started, click that subscribe button in YouTube and take a minute or two to download the Simply Good Food TV app. This episode, as I said just a second ago, um, is from about a year ago. I recorded this and this was when I used to do everything point of view style using my GoPro camera. So it's kind of a flashback to what I used to do uh, a little more, but I wanted to share this because of what I'm making, which is the Italian style sous vide swordfish. So let's get started. We're going to do something from the sea. We're going to do sous vide swordfish. Now the reason I'm going to use a sous vide is I've made swordfish a bunch and I always cook it too long or lo not long enough and with the sous vide it's impossible to screw it up. Um, sous vide is a French style of cooking but we're going to make this kind of an Italian style swordfish and then we'll uh, finish it by searing it on the, on the uh, stove. Now I am making uh, a full dinner today, so we're recording a couple different ep episodes. We're gonna make uh, some uh, Tuscan style roasted potatoes and red pepper risotto. So those are gonna be two additional episodes. I'm gonna break it up so we get three episodes out of this out of one long day of filming. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the ingredients for our swordfish steaks. Now again, we're gonna do the sous vide style because it's impossible to screw them up. So what we're gonna do in our sous vide bag, we're gonna put one of our swordfish steaks. We're gonna use the juice from half a lemon, a little bit of thyme, salt, pepper, and probably about a tablespoon or so of olive oil in both of the bags. I actually have three swordfish steaks, so we'll get all those in the sous vide. I'm gonna finish these with some clams. So the way I really like to do my clams is I'm gonna take the liquid from the sous vide bag that we cook the swordfish in. I'm gonna take that with some white wine, maybe a little bit of olive oil, salt, pepper, a little bit of red pepper flake, probably about a half of a um, shallot finely diced. We're gonna split some uh, tomatoes. I got two different collars. I just, again, this is for collar. And then we're gonna steam our clams. Um, in all that um, and my grocer did not have any fresh clams so anytime you can't find fresh clams these frozen clams work really well um, they're easy and they're already pre-cleaned and whatnot so you just got to take them out out of the bag get them a, a, a quick rinse once you've got them thawed so this will be towards the end but it's so easy let's get cooking we're gonna get our swordfish steaks ready to drop in the sous vide. So what we're gonna start with is our vacuum sealed bag. I've got it sealed on one side. We drop in our swordfish steak. When you drop these in, you try to not let anything touch the, the top of the bag so it'll seal better. All right, now we take our olive oil. We're gonna put about a tablespoon of olive oil in there. I am using my Balucci Italian olive oil. That's about enough. We are gonna use a little bit of thyme down in there. Probably enough, just want a little bit. A little bit of salt. You always use kosher salt. Right down in there. A couple cranks of the pepper. Like so. Now, what I've done here is I've got a, uh, I, I got the juice from two lemons, so we're going to use, this is a two tablespoon, two tablespoons of that. And what I've got is the zest from two lemons, so we're going to use just a little bit of the zest there as well. I am going to come back with a little bit more olive oil. And there we go. We've got one done. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to trim this off a little bit and vacuum seal. So let's go ahead and finish this one up. And then I will get the other ones ready to go. What did I do with my scissors? All right, found my scissors, but actually I've got a better idea. We wanna make sure this is straight across. Let me adjust the camera just a little. We wanna make sure that this is cut straight across. And this is our cutter inside of here. So we, need to, we do need to leave a little bit across the top just so it will um, have room to seal and whatnot. Let me rearrange that in there. So there we go. So yeah, I've got a lot of excess bag here. It just makes it easier in the sous vide if we kind of trim it up a little bit. Let's go with that right there. That takes a little bit off the top of the bag. 
run our cutter across. Boom, nice straight edge. You can see, maybe you can see this, we got a little bit of olive oil inside. So what I'm gonna do is just to make sure we get a good seal, I'm gonna try to wipe that a little bit. All right, so now with our vacuum sealer, this is the Food Saver vacuum sealer. Let's turn the power on. We are going to set, it's right here, it's got a, um, a food button and it says dry or moist. Well, we've got liquids, so it's moist. And then we just stick this in until it kicks off the, uh, the hits the sensor and then it'll draw out all the air. So it's pulled all of the air out. Now it's just kind of heat sealing across the top. And it'll, it does a very good job sealing it. There we go. Just let the air out. Boom, done. Look at that nice good seal across the top. It's, you can see it's all in this liquid. Now what the vacuum sealer does is it really pulls those flavors into the meat. Now I've got to do this three more times. I've got three more swordfish steaks here. So I'm going to rinse and repeat three more times and I'm going to save you guys from the boredom of watching me do this time and time again. So next step will be to drop these into our sous vide. All right, I've repositioned over by the sous vide. I have it set for 135 degrees. Been letting it get the water to the right temperature. Now I've had the sous vide in a previous episode, but for those that didn't get to see that episode. A sous vide is a French method of cooking. If you watch the movie Burnt, they have the industrial sous vide. Quite honestly, the home sous vide, I love the Innova because it's Bluetooth and I can, I can actually set it with my phone and monitor the food and whatnot and it's really slick. It makes it impossible to screw food up because what it does is get it the exact temperature that you need it clear through. So I've let these marinate in the refrigerator for about an hour. All we're gonna do is drop our swordfish steaks right down in the water just like so push them right down in there those are going to go for oh we'll say 40 minutes and ow it's hot because you know it is hot water um, so there we go they are in the sous vide it's circulating the water it's set for 135 degrees in 40 minutes we're going to come back and get these out it's time to get our swordfish out of the sous vide so what i'm going to do is I'm just gonna put the packs over here in this colander in the sink that I used earlier to make potatoes and that's just so I don't burn the ever-loving crap out of myself. Now what I'm going to do, let me, let me unplug the sous vide here. You see that sous vide is kind of stirring that water around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unbag these um, swordfish steaks. We want these to rest and cool down just a little bit because I'm gonna pan sear them and we don't want the heat to rise too much. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna reserve all that yummy liquid in there that we're gonna to use to make our clams. So I'm just gonna go ahead, get the liquid out of this, and then we'll be back when we're ready to sear these bad boys. It's time to sear our swordfish so what i've done is i've got just a tiny tiny amount of olive oil tiny by my standards anyway in the bottom of the pan i've got our swordfish and what i've done is i've kind of dabbed the top dry so i'm going to put it top in you let it cook one to two minutes on each side and that's it because it's already cooked the sous vide has cooked it clear through so it's not like we've got to worry about getting it done it's done it's just we want to put a nice sear on it I'm gonna make sure my pan's nice and hot. My olive oil starting to smoke just a little bit. That tells me it's nice and hot. There we go, you can hear that sizzle. I'm putting it dry side down. And then I'm gonna come in with my paper towel here and dab the top dry because I wanna, as soon as it cooks here for a uh, minute, I'm gonna turn these over. Got my heat on about six out of 10. Don't touch them, let them set. They're gonna go for a minute, then I'm gonna flip them. It's been a minute, so it's time to flip our fish. I flipped one and you can see it's got a nice sear, which is exactly what we want. Some little bit of sear mark. Perfect. That is exactly what we want. We wanted a, a little bit of collar on them. So, one more minute. And then these are done and we're gonna let them rest. Let's get these off the heat. Turn my heat way down here for a second. As you can see, 
Got a little bit of collar on each side. These bad boys are done. What I'm gonna do is stick these up in the microwave. Now with our pan, we'll come back with the liquid that we reserve. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of shallot, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of white wine. I'm gonna get my heat up because I wanna get the alcohol out of that wine. I'm gonna soften the shallots and everything. And once it starts boiling off, actually what we're trying to do is reduce this by about half. So I'm gonna sneak away for just a second. We'll be right back. So I've got the heat cranked up a little bit on my on my liquid here that I reserved from the swordfish with some wine. And if you remember, there's some olive oil, there's some thyme. We're just trying to get this good and hot, trying to reduce it down. So our liquid had started to reduce. I've got the heat down all about on about three quarters, we'll say. I've dropped in some red and orange tomatoes, really just for collar. Presentation's important. So we're gonna let this go for just another minute or two, we'll say two minutes, and then I'm gonna come in with the clams and we're gonna get those steamed. I don't want my tomatoes to break up or get too mushy. So I think they're about where I want them. I'm gonna reach over here real quick and grab the uh, clams. Okay, I've got my clams. As you can see, they're just looks like they're almost open anyway. We're gonna throw a lid on the clam, give them a little shake. We're gonna let those steam. We're gonna say for two minutes and then they're done. Again, those are frozen clams. They're not live. I wish they were because they're always better that way. It has been two minutes. This is done. I'm gonna turn the heat off on that and we're gonna get our swordfish plated up, make it look real pretty and then we'll be back. All right, I plated up our swordfish. I got some shine going because I've been running around the kitchen here, so I apologize for the shiny head here. I'm gonna try this. As you can see, it looks real pretty. I've got it so it's nice and presentable. Wow. Lemony, the lemon flavor went clear through. You can taste the thyme in it. Mmm, it's good. You know what? It looks really good. This is gonna pair well with the risotto that you're gonna see in the next episode. It's a red pepper risotto. So thank you so much for watching this episode of POV Italian Cooking. Um, follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn. Our email is povitalian at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching and ciao.